This speech is the word of the Almighty Allah. The best way of life is the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of affairs are the prescribed matters and the worst of affairs are the novelties, the innovated matters. The best of knowledge is that which benefits. The other hand is better than the lower hand and wailing over the dead is from ignorance. The worst of earnings is the filthy, disgusting earnings of a riba. The worst of reports are those which are lies. Abusing a Muslim is wickedness. Killing him is kufr and backbiting him is eating his flesh. He who withholds his anger, the Almighty Allah rewards him. He who is patient in calamities, the Almighty Allah turns his affairs, making it aright. He who does acts to be seen by man, to be heard by man, to be known by man, indeed the Almighty Allah makes it known of him. He who is arrogant, boastful, full of egotism, the Almighty Allah debases him. Know, my dear beloved, that the Almighty Allah rose over his throne in a way that suits his majesty and glory. He indeed is the first, the last, the most high, and the most near, the knower of everything. Lord of the seven heavens, Lord of the seven earths, the spitter of the seed and the seed stone. Nothing, absolutely nothing, is in the likeness of the Almighty Allah, nor is there anything comparable or partner to Him. What was it that expelled Iblis from the heavenly realms, causing Him to be rejected and cursed forever and ever? What was it that expelled our parents, Adam and Eve, from paradise, the home of delight? Bliss, splendor, and joy. What was it that drowned the people of the earth, such that the water rose above the mountains? What was it that caused the violent winds to overcome the people of Ad, such that it flung them down dead upon this earthly existence? What was it that caused the piercing shrieks to overcome the people of their mood, such that their hearts were severed, torn vigorously apart from within their own very bodies. What was it that caused the town of the people of Lot, you all know who I'm talking about, to be raised up high, turned upside down, and then come crushing onto this earth. Thus, rocks from above, pelted upon them, suffering a punishment, the likes of which no other nation ever experienced. What was it? that caused the clouds of punishment to overcome the people of Shu'ib such that when it reached above them it rained upon them a scorching fire. What was it that caused Fir'aun and his army to be drowned in the ocean? What was it that caused Korun his wealth, his assets, his dwellings, his people to sink down in the abyss of his earthly existence. And what was it that destroyed generations after generations to be afflicted with turmoil, various punishment causing their annihilation, brothers and sisters? Is there any evil? Is there any harm in this dunya and the akhirah except 
that it is due to sins and disobedience. وَلَقَدْ هَرَقْنَا الْكُرُونَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ We indeed destroyed the generations before you when, when they committed evil. Sins run. This great nation, the Ummah of our beloved Prophet once upon a time used to be governed by great and powerful men and women. Men and women were neither temptation nor any form of torture could ever lead them astray. Men and women who led their lives for the sole purpose of one, not two, but one, and that is to please Al-Aziz Al-Jabbar Al-Mutakabbir, who never ever put their affairs, their mundane affairs, before Rabbul This is Islam. This is Islam. From start to end, it is a call for courage, for bravery, to stand firm, steadfast on the hawk, and having patience in the face of adversity. You know, Islam is, no need, is not in need of males and females. I repeat, Islam is not need, in no need. Of males and females. Of men and women. For every man is a male. But not every male is a man. Every woman is a female. But not every female is a woman. What are we? 1.6 billion plus in the world. 1.6 billion plus in the world. But we are without no substance, but the foam on the surface of the flood. As our beloved teacher, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told us in a hadith collected by Muhammad ibn Asma'il al-Bukhari that real men, listen to this beautiful now, real men are as rare as a reliable strong camel. That can endure the long trips of the desert. Listen to this. You will find one in every hundred. One in every hundred. You know, our brother comes to me and says to me, There is. I go, Yes, you're happy. Because I'm a real man. Because, yeah, I've got such a big chest that no shirt can fit me. I go, I can see that. Brothers and sisters, real men and women are not measured by their muscles, their physical strength. They're not judged by their outward beauty. No. Look at Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Correct, Shaykh. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Radiyallahu anhu. He had extremely thin legs, so much that the companions were laughing at their thinness. So Rasulullah Sallallahu comes past and looks at him, what are you laughing at? Listen to his response. He goes, indeed, Abdullah's legs will be heavier on the day of resurrection on the scales than Mount Uhud. This is manhood. This is real man, not the chest and the biceps and the thighs. No, that's fake. Umar al Farooq Abu Hafs, just upon his name being mentioned, he will cause earthquakes before the feast of the pagans. They will break, buckle, and shake. As soon as he embraced Islam, real manhood immediately manifested in his life. It wasn't due to his size of body or his looks, no. 
but the strength of Iman and Taqwa of standing firm on the truth and not wavering. An excellent <laughs> quality that won him honor, respect, but most of all what? Most of all what? A palace in eternal gardens of bliss and happiness. Today, many of us, sadly to say, many, they bend down. They bend to the smallest precious of the adversaries of Islam. A bit of a calamity, a bit of a negative wind, and they distant themselves to the point where many even change their names, their identities, even secularizing their families. What kind of Islam is this? What kind of belief is this? Well, why the true believers? Those with foresight, determination, courage, Islam. They are not deterred by the floods of insults, by the false propaganda that they are sure to face. They fear not the blame of the blamers, the plot of the plotters, nor the threat of the bullies. This is true Islam. True Islam. Yes, I agree, as we all do, that today, this Ummah is stifled with numerous crises. For indeed, the horns of the devil are raised in every corner of the globe. In a world where the winds of evil amongst mankind are blowing immensely, in an atmosphere filled with hatred and enmity, with greed, competition, jealousy and envy, with wars, instability and turmoil, with tribulations and trials and confusion, where the good is looked at as bad and the bad is looked at as good. But guess what? All this has been prophesied. It's quite normal. It's to be expected, and even worse. Why? Why, Ya Muhammad Khadr? Because we're at the end of days. Do we not know that narration that mentions to us when he informed us about this Ummah? He said, that the start of this nation of Islam was the era of prosperity, of blessing, of honor, of glory. But the end of this Ummah, the latter part, will be afflicted with calamities, tribulations, trials that you will never accept, nor will you understand. And he said, What do you all fit to? What do you all fit to? For And fitna will come. We are in these days. It is in our days. And fitna will come. And each fitna that does come will make that which is previous insignificant. Nothing. Trivial. Futile. But why? Do we see all these calamities? Why in our life do we get attacked by disasters and problems and afflictions? Why? It comes with a purpose, a divine wisdom. Many of us claim to be strong believers. Many of us believe that we are in ultimate trust. Reliance, confidence in Allah's victory. But, but, you can claim Islam as much as you want. You can say you're a strong believer. My Iman is like a mountain. But, the test, the real test, is when things go wrong. When a calamity befalls you, this is when you're tested. Not when you're relaxed 
on your couch potato with the remote in your hand and say, I'm a strong believer. No. When the real test befalls you, a calamity, a disaster, no matter what it may be, this is where the truth fall from the liar is distinguished. This is where the strong from the weak is known. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَجِعُونَ Give glad tidings to the patient. Those, when a calamity befalls them, this is the test. This is the test. They say, indeed we belong to Allah. And to him we shall return. As mankind believe that they'll be left alone to say, I believe, I'm a good believer, I'm a strong mu'min, Muslim, without being examined. That's cheap. It's easy to say, I'm a strong believer. But when you're examined, when the test befalls you, this is what examines, this is what defines who you really are. The Amiz Allah al Khabitha min al Tayyib. So Allah will distinguish the evil from the God. Allah di khalaq al mawta wal hayata. The Yabluakum ayyukum ahsanu amana. The one who created death and life. Why? Why? To test you. To see who is best in deeds. But isn't it beautiful to be tested? Do you not like to be tested? Do you not know that when a calamity befalls you, or when you worship Allah in tribulations and trials, there is a special taste, a special favor, flavor, and reward? A special reward. Listen to this beautiful narration. Worshipping in times of tribulations and confusion is like migrating to join me. Allah What a beautiful narration. Doesn't it give us hope? Ecstasy? Happiness? Joy? If it doesn't, there's something seriously wrong with you. What about the narration that mentions? There a time will come. It's entertainment. If you don't like me, you can look at that. A time will come when to hold firm on to Islam huh? will be like holding on to fire. Will be like holding on to fire. And the one that holds on to his lap, listen to this, ya ikhwati wa ya akhwati. Wallahi, this is such an opportunity to be a Muslim, a privilege, an honor. The one who holds firm in our times, Wallahi, is in our times. The one who holds firm unto this deen will get the reward equal to 50 men. What more can you ask? All of us, what more can we ask? Now in this authentic narration in a Tirmidhi in Abu Dhabi, then when the companions heard of this, they were absolutely flabbergasted, shocked, amazed. 50 men, the reward of 50 men, they were curious. Ya Rasulullah, 50 men from among them, us. Us. And the response was what? The reward of 50 men amongst you, your companions. For the one today who holds firm onto this beautiful deen, you will be receiving the reward of 50 companions. If this is not encouragement, I do not know what is. This is not inspirational. I do not know what it is. It's dynamic. Perfection. For those who so desire. For those who so desire. So in the midst of all this drama, 
This narration is not just to listen to. It's encouraging us. It's strengthening us. It's reminding us. It's awakening us from this world and all that is in this world of calamity and problem. It's strengthening our Iman. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not want us to despair, to lose hope in Him, to lose trust in Him. That's Allah ta'ala. He loves us. He wants us to be strong, firm, not to break, buckle and shake. He wants us to revive our Iman, our Taqwa daily and strengthen our worship towards Him and for Him. Understand that the greatest defeat in this world is psychological breakdown and weakness of resolution. This is exactly what Allah warned against. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ do not despair, do not grieve, do not be sad, and you will be victorious. You will be triumphant. You will be superior if indeed the condition you are true believers. Allah, what a beautiful deen. Listening to this ahadith, to these great, beautiful, perfected verses. Doesn't give us hope. Victory is there for us. It's whether you have stretched out your hand, your arm, and said, I want this victory. It is up to you. Allah has given every single one here a victory. Listen to the beautiful hadith of Khabbab. We all know this beautiful narration. Khabbab, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He went to Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he asked Rasulullah to supplicate Allah for alleviation, to lighten their punishment. And it's important here to mention a very important thing, and that is that the time that Khabbab actually went to Rasulullah was at the weakest state for the Muslims. They were at their weakest state. And Khabbab himself had deep black holes in his back. He had what? Deep black holes in his back. The pagans, they would burn rocks over the fire for a long period of time. And when the rocks became extremely hot, they threw Khabbab with his naked back onto these rocks. Such that his flesh will start burning. And he himself said that I smelt my fat burning on these rocks, which left these deep black holes in his back. So subhanAllah he went and requested from his teacher sallallahu alayhi wa to supplicate his Lord to alleviate the burden the suffering. Which of us has this ever happened to him? But what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam respond with? Did he say, yes, I'll so do this in that name? Cultivating, training, teaching Khabbab and the companions and his ummah. He said, Amongst the nations that came before you, a believer would be brought forward and placed in a hole that was dug for him, and a saw would be placed on his head, and he would be sawed into two pieces blood, flesh, nerves flying everywhere. Yet, despite all this punishment, he would never reject the Kalima. You have suffered something like this instead, stood firm like this. And then he said, in the name of Allah, listen to this. 
listen to it with an open ear and an open heart. In the name of Allah, this deen, Islam, will be victorious. Until a traveler goes from Sanat to Hadramaut, fearing none but Allah. And listen to what he said after that. But you are a people who is in a hurry. In a hurry. It was at their weakest state. They were being punished severely. They were being burnt, scarred, branded, colorized, flogged and whipped. And they are in a hurry. Which of us are not in a hurry? A little bit of a scent of this or that. What, what should I do here? Sabor, sabor, sabor. Sabor. This is the trust. This is the trust. We all need to live with. No matter how difficult things may be. Patience. Allah made patience. Like a fast horse. That never tires. Like a strong army. That can never be defeated. Like a powerful fortress that can never be breached. Patience loves victory. And victory loves patience. Allah grant us patience so we can be victorious. I will end with this last hadith. The battle of Al-Ahzab. The battle of Al-Ahzab. The confederates. The battle of the ditch, the battle of the trench. We all knew this was an extremely rough and tough battle. A very, very hard and difficult time. 10,000 disbelievers united against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Surrounded Medina. And inside Medina, the Jews breached a contract of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and sided with the disbelievers. So they had a battle on two fronts, from the outside and from in, inside. When they were digging the trench around Medina, they came across a huge rock that couldn't break, the companions couldn't break it. So they called her Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he came, subhanallah di khalaqah, with stones tied to his stomach. With stones tied to his stomach to suppress the hunger. Medina was cold. There was no food. There was nothing. And listen to what he said. He came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He went to the huge rock that they couldn't break. He struck that rock three times with his axe. How many times have I The first time, his first strike, listen carefully. The situation, as you heard, very rough, very tough, very hard. He said, Allah, Akbar. I was given victory over the Persian. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, he said, I was given a victory over the Persians. Now the situation is, as you see, in a very difficult situation, and he's saying, this is nothing. I will be given not only victory over this, but over the Persians as well. And we all know the great battle of Al-Qaeda. It was led by the lion himself, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. So what a great battle that was. Indeed. This is firm. This is victory. This is haqiqat al-Iman and taqwa They are in that situation and he's saying to the companions, 10,000 disbelievers Surrounding Medina, the Jews on this side, right, left, front, back. I was given victory over the Persians. The second strike, three times, correct? He said, Allahu Akbar, I was given victory over the Romans. Yeah, the Munafiqun here 
spoke the money the corner must the Muslim that were there. They said one of us cannot even go and relieve himself. He's talking about the Jew of the Persians, the Romans. One of us, he said, they said, cannot go and relieve himself due to the situation, the enemy around us. And he's talking about the Persians and the Romans. Muhammad nor the companions, nor us, not one of us. Then for the third time, Allahu Akbar, I was given victory over Yemen. The situation as you heard. Sorry, it wasn't Muslim, it wasn't Muhammad, no, no, Michael. Excuse me. Why is it Michael now? Yes, that was Muhammad. Oh, I'm Michael. <laughs> this is not the way of a Muslim. You know, we all want victory. And victory is there for you. But like every single one of us here, if he wants to be, he's victorious. Every single one of us is victorious. You know how you can be victorious? You know how? To be steadfast, to be firm, to be strong on this rock, on this privilege, on this honor, on this reset, this glory, Islam. Be steadfast and remain who you are. Stop clowning around or toying around. When a calamity befalls you or some negative propaganda out there, you start buckling and shaking. What should I do? Remain who you are. And that's what you should do. Muhammad today and Muhammad until I die. <coughs> In my grave, I'm Muhammad, not Michael. Fear not the blame of the blame is the plot of the plurals of the threat of the bullies. Fear Allah, fear Allah, for he is the one you're going to be accountable to and no one else. Brothers and sisters, victory and defeat, gain and losses, success and failure are not determined by numbers, skills or money. It's not going to determine victory, no, but rather Victory, success, gains is by the balance of obedience and disobedience of Allah. The more we obey Him individually and collectively, the more we hasten His victory. And the more we disobey Him, the more we delay the arrival of His victory. So be victorious in your own selves by conquering your own problems. Your own vices, falls, and sins. So you too can be victorious in your own personal battles against your own internal enemy, your low commanding ego. May Allah make us all victorious, May He strengthen us. May He keep us firm, united, loving, caring to one another. May he stop this satanic desire and whisper and demonic whisper from allowing him to enter our minds and destroying this brotherhood that we have. We are ikhwa. Innam al mu'minuna ikhwa. We are brothers who love and care for each other. Akulu ma tasma'oom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. لا بد من السيف ولا بد من الجهاد ولا بد من ولا يرعب الاعداء اعداء المسلمين 
لا يرعبهم ابدا الا 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 القوه الا السلاح اما ما دون ذلك اي ما دون السلاح فانه وان نفع في بعض الناس واثر فيهم لكنه في كفره المعاندين لا يؤثر ولا ينفع والجهاد دعامه وركن متين من اركان هذه الشريعه قام هذا الدين الاسلام هذا الدين الاسلامي قام على هذا الركن وهذا الاساس الذي لا يمكن ان يقوم الدين ولا يمكن ان يثبت قدم الاسلام بدون جهاد مطلق